Okay. Which is a duck? replacement for this thing. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I am in the ment I am in the mental fog right now. Please go forward, tip. Keep your Mr. Tip Top, straight. let's go forward. And here we go. Alternate bringing your knees up to touch the ring con. Breathe out as you raise your knees. Oop, oh, I'm doing the wrong, doing the wrong order because I'm reading right. things. Good. Next is the heel lift stretch. Bring the insides of your ankles up toward the ring con. Be mindful of your body and stretch within the range of your ability. Last time. Yes, just like that. Next is the back straightening stretch. Take a big step forward and drop your hips. Focus on lowering your body without putting too much weight on your front foot. Be sure to keep your lower back straight. Let's do one more of each. All right, good. Finally, spread your feet. Raise the ring con above your head and lean to the side. Focus on leaning to the side without bending forward. This should stretch both the muscles in your sides and in your arms. Let's do one more of each. Great job! Whew, okay. Did things a little out of order, but at least it's done. So today's warm up. Oh, I have enough points. All right. Look, we'll start off today in a couple good notes. Max hearts, and I have access to the rest of the entirety of the grid. I didn't think I got enough levels for that already. Anyway. Let's start off by doing arrow shoot. This will be a nice warm up exercise. Oh, God damn it. Still in a mental fog. Ready? Go! Open your parachute. Nice 
Please. Go, 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 go. Bring it around town. Try this to work your core. Keep it up. There, at least I hit it. It's a little hard to see my shadow. Right, drop it. Bring it down low. Come over this way. Bring it down even lower. Oh, I missed it. And now the game's gonna say not good enough for an A rank. Watch. Okay. <sighs> Try it again. Hitting it's better than not hitting it, right? Even if it's not a perfect hit. Alright, come back. Got it. Probably still not an A though. No, my luck. Okay, never mind. It's a new vessel. It's definitely made. It's the most my reward. I did not get any reward. But hold on. I didn't get it. Oh, I guess I had to get that to pa open the path forward. That sucks. All right. Well, while well, I let my arms recover from that, let me just see what we got. Can I clean honey out of her clothes? Dang it, I pushed the wrong button. Somebody's gonna take that horribly out of context, I already know. Scooter, hold the uh -huh. controller like you like you would normally, and do this. There, you hit the A button. Oh, it's still gonna cost two per. Uh -huh. I don't want to give preference to any one specific routine, so uh -huh. I'm just gonna buy what I can. Uh -huh. 
so I'm gonna be slightly underpowered, but excuse me, I'm gonna be slightly underpowered, but again, I won't be favoring a routine, and if anything, oops, wrong. Why can't I use a controller today? Help. Yeah, so really all I'm missing, I'm basically, if I try equipping this set, I'm basically going to be sacrificing some amount of attack anyway for effectively two defense, so. Just going to buy all I can, get the two citrines later. Get the two citrines later to buy the last shoes, and then, yeah. Call it good there. I got a mustache tickling me inside. I got a mustache here tickling me inside of my nose, oh. and it's driving me crazy. Forearms and paws. Oh. Yes, I know Armando. Arms was a game that Nintendo made for the Nintendo Switch that had about a two, but had about a two week to two month lifespan, and then died. Despite how awesome it was. And I'm part of the and I'm part of the reason to blame for that. forced me into, he forced me into very specific skills. Well, don't, don't ask me to look a gift horse in the mouth. Good thing I took a moment to rest my arms by buying, by buying random crap. Okay, let's go. Press in on the ring on Honestly, I probably could have, honestly, I probably could have oh floored this guy Fantastic. if I had put together the red armor, the red, uh, Acrobatic or aerobic set, whatever it's called, just put that whole set together. Okay. Nice. Well done. Amazing. Actually, this is a boss fight. I should uh, get the double money thing to smooth on in a second here. Probably not the song that's playing right now. I could take things even a step further with this fight and just use my, uh, do some of my smoothies to offset the fact I'm not using special armor sets. mentally awake here in, in a bit as I go, but just, not to name any names of people, but I was talking with a friend last night and they were kind of distressed about something, so I, and they stay up late, so I kind of talk some things through with them to make them feel better. I talked a few things through with them to make them feel better. And once I once we got through with that, I realized, oh shoot, it is oh I don't have a lot of huh, we made my black tea stuff. I went, oh shoot, it is 4.30 in the morning. I should go to bed. Uh do I mean just simple? I guess not simple. Double attack up. Alright. Well, that's as simple as we get. Gosh, excuse me. The 
because then I woke up at. What was it? I ended up waking up at. After that, I woke up like 10:30 this morning, so I didn't get a full night's worth of sleep on top of that. And I woke up because, huh, my computer's on. I told it to shut down when I finished rendering. Today's when I finished rendering the video overnight last night. So my computer start my computer starting to do that lovely thing, or I guess the program I'm using is starting to do that lovely thing where when it shuts down. Instead of, or instead of the, my uh, editing suite shutting down once I'm done rendering something, instead of it shutting down, it's it's instead restarting my computer. just restarted, or everything had just restarted with it, so I was like, okay, let me watch, let's, let's, let me play back this video, make, give it this once over, while I do my morning uh, computer check-in routine, see if it processes properly, and it did, so... Once that was done, I guess about 11.30, 12 o'clock, I, I started uploading the video. Okay. Had myself something to eat. And then about, <laughs> about 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 1.30, I made a tweet that was like, Yeah, so once this video's done uploading, I'm gonna try and stream rink it so I can, so if the Monster Hunter Rise beta, uh, beta is live again, I can go ahead and play that tonight, potentially with friends. And five minutes after that, I was out like a light, and I didn't wake up until my, uh, my roommate came home and was making dinner for themselves. Before, kind of there right now because it do it, it do begin to be spring and I do have I do have asthma slash allergies so it might be part of the reason why I kind of talked out so I didn't take my allergy pill today either so I think my body was doing its natural defense of go to sleep something's not wrong with you Sickle cell. Damn. Okay. Nice. I know exactly what that is because that's oddly enough one of the few things from high school I remember being taught and, and remembering exactly what it is. Ouch. Like an anecdote or anything like that to make anything better because that just sucks. So I guess I'm just gonna drop that suck conversation there. <laughs> Good job. Excellent. Very nice. 
just take a day to relax. I mean, I don't do anything super stressful. I mean, I edit. I guess, yes and no, I do things stressful. Yesterday, I. As far as my book, because I view my workout sessions as. I view my workout sessions as my, uh. My, uh. One thing I have to do that I don't like to do thing that, I, that usually everybody else does every day. And I just didn't have the energy to do it yesterday, so I just skipped it. Even though yesterday was a light workout day for me in comparison to most of my days. Oh, excuse me. Like, I didn't do my workout thing, but I did, for the most part, for me to sit down and edit videos from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to sleep. And the day prior, I recorded videos from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to sleep. It, that that last one's not entirely true. I think I spent like six hours recording videos on Tuesday. God, it's already Thursday. Twist your No shame taking a rest. I mean, what is it? It's my. I've taken. Outside of working on video stuff, yesterday was my. Yesterday was my one day of rest I've had, and like, not even work. Well, just generally speaking, my, yesterday is my one day of. Oh, we're doing this. I didn't see which direction the ring was being held. Yesterday is my one my one day of rest that I've had in like two weeks roughly. And you do need rest and I need to remind myself of that. Regardless of how much I harp on trying to work out every day. Occasionally your body just your occasionally your body just needs rest. Unfortunately I have a I have a nasty history and habit of being incredibly lazy, so I, I can't really tell the difference between me, me just being lazy and my body, or my body being lazy and me need, actually needing the rest. And when I say terrible habit, I mean, used to, I used to find ways to avoid moving a 20 pound bag of something while well, I was lazy in the past. One, just one twenty pound bag, nothing else. But I found ways to avoid doing it. Wonderful. Nice. Excellent. Okay. Keep it up. Oh, I have no idea what's going on. We need to be good, but it's a methane plant Fantastic. over here. I don't know what I've done to cause that. Excellent. Okay. All okay. editing and a little bit of Five rendering. Today was just me sleeping Three. most of this Keep day. Fine work. One left. Okay. Okay, let's switch sides. And I'm kind of I'm secretly hoping that by the time I'm done doing the ring fit my ring fit session for the day and or streaming for the day, that friends will be active and want to play the Monster Hunter Rise beta if it is out again at this point. 
Because all Capcom has, or I guess I should say specifically the Monster Hunter team, specifically said that there will be a beta this weekend with a hunts that were in the first beta along with Magnamalo, the new monster. But they never said anything about when it would happen. All they said that there was a stream today. They were going to have an announcement stream sometime today. Just talking about stuff. Okay, let's go. Raise the ring. Very nice. Amazing. Good job. Amazing. Fantastic. All right. Keep it up. This is gonna finish him off, so we're gonna have Perfect. We're gonna have another round of something to fight back at him with. Amazing! Excellent! And I'm gonna have sore arms tomorrow. Yippee! Waha! Mario Day's over, but woohoo! Yippee! Waha! Only three, only three more weeks until Mario perishes. It's a, t it's a tired joke, but it's still a fun joke to make every now and again. Is that enough? Oh, so close. Really? A tough one, but you can do it. You're on your last leg and that's what you're gonna do is you're gonna check your muscles? I mean, flex the pecs and respect the pecs, but come on, man. Okay, let's go. Imagine holding something in your arm. Very nice! Nicely done! Okay! Is this health bar actually moving? Okay. I had to ask. <laughs> Great job. Go drink some water. Cause they did that with uh They did that with the final boss fight. Where they now didn't make his health bar move down to the point of with a victory pose. Dying off. Charge yeah, they didn't move. Now, he they made his health bar not move. Basically, to give a one final send off attack. I was wondering if they're going to start doing it with this. Alright. Well. Moving on to greener pastures. some smoothies. Um, I have one of these, so get five of those ready. And then I'm looking for double money stuff. Not the... Oh! I can make double experience. And then I have plenty of black tea for this, so... Ugh. I'm all ready! Like, I understand tea is... Tea is like, tea is probably, as long as you, like, have it, like, in a bag or something, tea is, pr is a fantastic drink to have. 
compared to most other energy drinks. I mean, coffee is probably the only thing that's on par with it for how healthy it is. But I just, unless it's unless it's hella processed green tea, I can't drink tea, man. You never see it done. Too lethargic to dance, but Kasai, thank you for raiding with with your with your friends and party and whatnot. Sorry, I'm still too lazy and have forgotten to set up a bot to do shout out commands. But what, what was your stream this evening, my friend? What did you do? Hopefully, you had a good stream. Looks tasty. Hello, Dark Wolf of Light. Welcome to Strim. And of course, for anybody that's coming here from Kasai's stream that hasn't been here before, hi, my name's Scooter. This is a Thursday night tradition here that where I stream Ring Fit. If you want to see what I do elsewhere, elsewhere it's down below me. Done, ch done chilling, let's play. More caca carrot cakes? I like more caca carrot cakes. That's good. At least you find yourself. At least you have yourself something you can fall back to. It is always nice to fall back on something if you finish something faster than you think. I need to find. Actually, I think I might have a game I can do for that, but I'm currently so nestled deep in my uh. Age of Calamity right now that playing that other game may not become a reality for some time. But... I want to say... Oh, but when does OB... But when doesn't OBS go technical on you? Um, I will say though... This will be weird, but fresh in the background... Back. Because for people who have been the streams lately, you know, I've been harping super hard on trying to finish Age of Calamity. Well, in the background, in the background, I have been spending a lot of my time grinding uh, rupees just to level everybody up so we don't have awkward grinding sessions on streams. Oh boy. Let me finish my thought here before I do mountain climbers. I've been spending a lot of my time grinding up rupees in Age of Calamity. And there is a stage that lasts like 10 seconds that, ye that basically yields like 10 rupees per s or that yields almost 100 rupees per, t per second spent in, in the mission. So I've been grinding through that, trying to level everybody up to where Link is. And that way, going forward with side missions, I don't have to worry about, oh, I'm not powerful enough with this one character. Oh, boy. Anyway. Now, I guarantee you, I'm probably going to stop at some point throughout these reps, just because I am still so groggy and lethargic from my day today. But... You will now witness the beauty and splendor that is the butt cam. What is the butt cam? Basically, I'm just going to be bouncing up. Basically, all you're seeing is my butt. <sighs> Move super energetically.
I lied about stopping. I appreciate it, Kasai. Whew. Mountain climbers are no joke, but that's why I do them. Man, I gotta catch my breath. Hang on. is a pounding. Okay, let's go. Raise your arms while breathing in. Yes! Yes! Excellent! Okay! Wonderful! Great! Awesome! Fantastic! Amazing! Neat! drinking a little bit of water so hey did you know that if you get a haircut by the way I have a haircut now if you get a haircut for the first time in six months you feel yourself sweating more because there's not as much hair to soak up the sweat is that only going 18 minutes in gate or actual exercise time right now and I'm sweating like I've just got through a full day. Well, through half a day at least. Split up the job this time. Okay, let's move. Hey, more power to you. I think I got a picture of me somewhere on the on my uh, somewhere. Sorry, I think I got a picture of myself somewhere. Good job. Excuse me. 
I think there's a picture of me somewhere from back in my high school days where my hair used to be down to my shoulders. Because I don't know if that's still the cool thing with hair, but 15 years ago when I was in high school, long hair was cool. Now, it's not necessarily a uh, stance on, as they were called at the time, hippies. Not so much a hippie thing, but it was just the hairstyle to have at the time. experiencing it yourself, but eventually you have your hair long enough for so long, it's like driving through the rain, it's like driving through the rain or the snow. Eventually you get so used to driving through it, your eyes just adjust and kind of fill in missing spaces and information between the rain droplets that you normally don't have. And that's kind of what happens in that scenario. I never got used to it. I would be constantly be doing the, uh, I would constantly be doing the head flick like this to get the hair out of my eyes. Alright, it's over here. That's why my uh, and that's why most of the uh, most of the older people I have blood relations left live with or no I should say kind of hate driving with me because if it's a drizzle they have their windshield wipers on the highest setting possible without even with even in even if it starts screeching I drive with it as low as possible while still without before my vision gets completely blocked out. One, because I hate the screeching, and two, I can't, I can just, my brain has learned to fill in the holes. Pretty sure as I get older, though, I'm not going to be able to have that luxury. I have been pretty much torturing my eyesight for the last 30 years playing video games off and on. Well, most, mostly on. My father's roadmap is anything to go by. By fit by 50, 55, I'm gonna need reading glasses, and by 60, I'm gonna need full-on prescription uh, lenses. Yeah. Well, like Jack said, and I said, eventually your, eventually you just your brain just kind of learns to fill in the blanks. Starfish. Here comes a giant fist! Okay. So that reminds me. That reminds me of two things. Because Viacom, I'm calling the company out specifically, 
Viacom specifically is taking what good, uh, good, good natured and good willed everything SpongeBob had, and is currently seeing how far it can push it into the dirt. So, first thing with Patrick, Patrick's getting his own spin-off show. Way better when I'm standing up, I can actually speak more clearly. Neat. Amazing. Is they gave a they gave a plot hole, they gave a they gave Wonderful. a plot reason to make Camp Coral, the SpongeBob prequel, canon. Good okay. lord. Send us a Stancia. That is true, to his two degree. But, unfortunately, when you sign over your intellectual properties to a bigger company, and you're no longer there, your name is not specifically on the paperwork anymore, because you can't be held accountable or be given royalties for all your work. So they just kind of take, take your intellectual property and run with it. It would basically be if I sold my likeness to G4. Amazing. I'm giving examples of companies that may do something like this. Not something that's happened. Basically, if I sold what I do and my likeness to G4, for example, now that it's back. Fantastic. If I Perfect. if I become a big figurehead kind of their All community right. and I just pass away, well, they're just gonna say they're gonna slap. They're gonna take my username. Or my full name, slap it all over whatever content creator they want to be the next big thing, and I have no say. Neither does my family have really have say in my name being besmirched or used to promote something. Nice, great. Let's pick up the pace. Excellent. Come on. Okay. crap hanging off of it and I just want to pull it off because it's going to distract me while I'm on the floor. Anyway, so the canon plot synopsis they give for why Camp Coral exists now is present day Sandy made a time machine to tell past Sandy to be friends with Spongebob to stop Plankton from stealing the Krabby Patty secret formula in the past. So Camp Coral is canon, thus retconning about almost all of seasons one and two of the original SpongeBob. <laughs> what you will. I don't watch that show anymore. I haven't watched it for, God, was it 15 years since it aired? So think what you will. I think it's kind of dumb. I think it's like the dumbest thing that's been done in, in uh, story writing to date. But I am not a writer. 
nor do I have any impact on that medium because I do not partake of it on the daily. Okay. Very nice. work. Keep it up. Excellent. Nice. So that kind of okay, that kind of bleeds over to something I wanted to... That, that sort of bleeds over to something that I kind of have been thinking about a lot more over the last few, uh... What is it? Over the last few... Okay. Well, you can see it on my shirt, at least to somewhat to recognize the blob, the blob-like shapes in the webcam. But a lot of super long running shows, at some point, like yeah, you can be upset it's doing something, or I guess games for this example. You can be upset that it's doing something and you're not on board with it. But if it's not, I would say like, this isn't a rule of thumb, but like if it's not an IP that's younger than 10 years, and they decide to kind of go off the rails, you can be passionate about it, but you have to understand that you as the consumer have probably outlived you as a consumer have more than likely outlived what they think you are outthink uh, who they should be caring about. Tough one. So like everybody crapped on everybody who is my age group has basically been dunking on Pokemon since generation six, I think. When I say my generation, I mean my age group, you know, my te within ten years of me age group. Personally, I think for the most part, they're doing something right in almost every time they do a game, but it's always falling short. But, I appreciate what they do. But there comes at some point where you just have to, you have to sit down with yourself, reflect and go, they're not going to listen to me, because this isn't aimed at my age group anymore, because I am beyond that age group. And the age group that does care about it, they don't care. <laughs> they just get to enjoy something. I wanna because I mean it's gonna happen at some point some point in the next two years I wanna say but I'm eventually gonna do a series on I'm eventually gonna do a walkthrough let's play series whatever you wanna call it on Pokemon Shield and I wanna make that like a focal point as we're going throughout that entire adventure because that is actually the plot the major plot point of that game is thinking about the future not thinking about yourself in the here and now. Nice. Drop your hips. Oh, I haven't had a chance to check this yet. Lightly cover the IR motion camera with the pad of your right so, yeah, I mean, as a longtime fan, of course, be upset. Measuring. As a longtime fan, Please something, of course, be upset. Control. But also re uh, rationalize with yourself that you're not what they're aiming at anymore. Your time to be the one they aim at has long passed. Enjoy it if you can enjoy it. If you can't enjoy it, you may have outgrown it. What I just want to do is to activate this so I can get back to the hut quicker. Because as soon as I get another Citroën, I'm going to go buy that last item. So, that's just my... Those are just my 10 to 20 cents on the matter.
Anyway. So yeah. Get myself full of this. So yeah, like I said, be upset. You can be upset if something is no longer appealing to you. That's fine. Don't do that either. Don't spew crap. But don't like, don't viscerally and with toxicity and venom in your voice assault the creators. Don't don't attack a creator just because it's something that's not for you. Or a creative body. If it's something like a content creator, this includes myself, by the way. I want to make a big point on this. This this statement includes myself. If something somebody if something that a content creator or an IP puts together for you no longer appeals to you, don't support them. If you have buyer's remorse, you can express buyer's remorse for, a, for an actual physical product you can obtain. You can express buyer's remorse. And if the company cares enough, they'll listen to that. But for someone like me who's a content creator, or even a bigger company that makes something that you don't like, simply do not support it. Unfollow, unsubscribe. Have those nice, keep those items that gave you nice memories with the company to your name. Or the person and keep them there as a memory of good times but don't viscerally attack them if you don't like them toxicity is only gonna hurt you in the long run coming apart. I need to get duct tape for it. Like, I'm yelling through the floor, so sorry if you can't hear me too well. Because you bring up Paper Mario, and I'm going to follow up, follow you up okay, on the next side. Let's go. So, keeping your feet on the original Paper Mario, weird, but for the most part, people ate it up. Excellent. Fell your door, people adored it. Super Paper Mario, it changed things up. Good job. And... A lot of people were still on board with it. There were a few that were like, no, this is not what I signed up for. I want an RPG. This is not an RPG, but that's what I want. Which is fine. Nice. Then those same people should not bought the next game. The people who bought the next game, who were not a fan of Super Paper Mario, thinking it's going to be returned to form, Very nice. those are the people who were incredibly Fantastic. toxic about it and were upset and basically tried to boycott Nintendo for an entire three months because of Sticker Star. God damn it. Okay. Me? I played about two and a half hours of Sticker Fine Star. I uninstalled done. it because I bought a digital code because I couldn't find a physical copy. I bought a digital. I then promptly uninstalled it after two and a half hours of play okay. trying to give it its fair chance. I made it. I made a tweet out there somewhere where I said, this is not the Paper Mario I signed up for. I'm bored after two hours instead of being drawn into its world. But that was the worst I was about that. And I think I made a follow-up. It's like, if the next one kind of goes back more to what Paper Mario seemed like, I'll try again. Now, regardless, that's also when I started getting the content creation super heavy-like. So... I haven't had a lot of time to divulge into either Color Splash or Origami King. Good job. But at least on the surface, those two have pulled me in more than Sticker Star have. So I'm pretty sure if I sit down with, with, with them more than like an hour, okay. I'd probably enjoy those two games. Wonderful. Well done.
<sighs> Alright, well, we won't cycle, but give me one second to finish this. Pop, uh, grind this out and then I'll read what you're saying, because I. Oh, down we go. Pull your knees in. Right. That's the exact point. You can express your how upset you are. Okay. I'm gonna pull into that. As I say, you're wearing a Pokemon shirt. I'm gonna dip my hand into the bear trap on this. So, people, to this day, to this minute, every time an official Pokemon account tweets anything, their replies get bombarded with, when are you gonna bring back the national decks? To this day, to this hour, to this minute. But now to get back more on track, I feel like I would, like I said, I think I would like Color Splash and Origami King a lot. I just haven't had the time for them. But also to put in mind for anybody out there trying to clip this to make incriminate me in some regard. I play a lot of indie games. I love a lot of indie games. Like, I'm just looking around the room trying to find... I'm trying to look around the room. Okay, here we go. Like, one of my favorite mascots has become Shantae. Okay, you can't see the box too well. There you go. One of my favorite mascots... One of my favorite mascots, mascots of the indie crowd has become Shantae. And, and especially if it's cheap, I'm not afraid to dip my hands into weird offshoot games that nobody's ever heard of. So I'm the kind of person where if something isn't the normal or it's something different, I sit there and I applaud going, yes, you did something that nobody else has done. Good job. This is a good thing. What I'm trying to dial back and say is, I'm easy to please, especially with my games. I think there have only been about 10 games in my lifetime. I'm going to take a little route. I think there have only been about 10 games in my lifetime of making content. Not so much my entire life. My entire life is closer to like 50. Just because shovelware, SNES, NES games. There have been... There have been more... There have been more... Uh, there have been 10 or less games where I've gone and said, I do not like this. I cannot recommend it. Do not give it your money. One of them I can think of off the top of my head is, is a game I did way back when I first started my Think Fast series on YouTube called Intrusion 2. It toted itself as being a faithful Contra recreation. It was a faithful Contra abomination. Sticker Star is another one of those games where I say where I have buyer's remorse on, where I say, don't get it. Don't get it because of Mario. Don't get it because it says Paper Mario. 
Don't get it because you think it's going to be the next Mario. Get it to support its unique ideas. I did not appreciate its unique ideas. If it had come out at the time, I would have told people, don't get paper, don't get, don't get Sticker Star. Instead, get Bug Fables. That's what you're looking for. Yes, like if they had released in the same time frame, I would have told people, I would have said to people, if you want Mega Man, if you want, uh, if you want classic Mega Man, get 20XX over Mighty Number no. 9. Or, actually I think it was out of time. Yeah, the second one was actually out of time. By the, published by the same company, by the way. If you want a classic Mega Man game, play Mighty Gunvolt, don't play Mighty Number no. 9. Of course, now Mighty Gunvolt's getting its third game? Yeah, I think Mighty Gunvolt's onto its third game now in its uh, catalog. Uh. Oh, excuse me. But I also understand the other side of that coin. Uh, I'm going to come back to that... Uh, I'm going to come back to that uh, whole... Game Freak Gen 5 remake stuff in a minute, by the way. Okay. But I also understand for people who who aren't as fortunate as others, like I consider myself to be fairly lucky. Not like I got oodles and oodles of money lucky, but like I put myself I was mature enough with myself in my life that with most of my life and my decisions that most of it by the way. That if I say I would like I would like game X, I can just say, okay, $20 out, game X is mine. I still rationalize my purposes and try and get everything on sale, but I will buy a game. Well done. Anyway. Great. Excellent. Uh that aside. So, here, because Nintendo has officially abandoned the 3DS at this point, so there is no, unless you buy a used 3DS, there is no way to get a copy and play a copy of Gen 5 anymore without them taking the initiative to update, update it for the Switch. I'm, I guess I'm kind of waiting for that to happen as well, but I worry so much for the Game Freak employees, because it's going to start. Like, what is it? Um, okay, the Gen 4 Remix come out this September, right? Or is it August? I forget. Okay, let's go. The Gen 4 Remix come out later this year. Third Very quarter, nice. I'll say. Wonderful. Great. Amazing. And you know well that a majority of people are going to be done and have beaten that game by... I'll say mid-October. I'll say just for Halloween. Most people will have beaten and been satisfied with Gen 4 enough to give their honest opinion on that remake. So what, so what will happen, starting on Halloween going forward, is every tweet that, that Pokemon makes is going to be, where are the Gen 5 remakes?
Meanwhile, I'm sitting over here. I'm sitting over here with, you know, what was it? Seven, eight years after the fact? Almost nine, I think, now? Going, yes, yes, I get a new Mario Go. Yes, I've been waiting so long for this game. Oh, World Tour was so fun, but now I'm going to get another Mario Golf and I can play with friends online and have all this fun. And the Pokemon community can't wait three months for a new anything. Patience is a virtue. Apples. I want the carrots. I want the caca carrot cake. Oh, how'd I miss that? How'd I get the coins around the experience coin? I'm a wizard. Good, more fennel that I have not used. You did it. Ah. Uh. Drop your hips. Oh right, wrong thing. Haha. <laughs> Be brain big, not. Victory! You're a blizzard, Ari. Oh what? <laughs> that is. That is so insensitive to Br to. Uh, British speakers, I apologize, or England speakers, uh, viewers, I apologize. Says the dumb American who can't decide on what word he wants to say next. But yeah. But no, I've got my own backlog, because I... Like, just so I don't do anything weird with the game. It's so like, you see this? You see this thick boy? Let me unzip it first. You see this thick boy? Almost entirely full with Nintendo Switch games? I think I finished maybe 5% of them. That's just on my Switch. I have old games over here in the cabinet to my left I have barely touched. My Steam library is a mountain of unfinished games. I heard about that game. Hold on. Uh, let me kill the uh, Twitch, the, uh, the view here, just so I can remember that, because you remind me of that. Oh, oh no, you can see behind the scenes. Oh no. Uh. This is going to take me a minute to look this up. I guess it's not on Steam, so I guess I'm going to keep forgetting about it. So here, let me do this. Uh, can I just get the page? Yes. So let's do this really quick. Per perfect. So this is the game. This is the game that was gifted to me by a friend. And I thought nothing of it. I hadn't even heard about it until he gifted it to me. And then all of a sudden, all these reviews are coming in for it. This Loop Hero game. And this is an indie game that I give, for example, that came out this year that I am in love with. Like, 
all the sound effects and graphics harken back to like an 85 90s computer game but it was made just now and it has such a cool idea and how you play everything with it that I think once I'm, if I'm not, like this weekend, if I, or this, the rest of this week, if I'm not grinding rupees in Hyrule Warrior, or Age of Calamity, or playing the Monster Hunter Rise demo with friends, I may be playing this. There was another indie game, Crumble. Crumble's another one that I love, but I just haven't had the time to play it. I say crumble like crumble cake, by the way. Like, depending upon how I feel once we get towards the end of this, uh, end of today, maybe I'll play a round or two with Loop Hero just to kind of show it off, but how you describe it is, like, how it presents itself and its mentality is, think of it like, basically like classic Diablo 2 in its presentation, but it's a roguelike, so once you make a decision, it's locked into place till either you close up shop for the night, close up shop for the night, until you close up shop for the night or you are killed by an enemy. You don't have any effect on the action of the game. You control the the uh, the equipment grid and what terrain goes on the loop your character is going along. Otherwise, you have no impact on the game. It's more like a it's kind of like a uh, hybrid between It's kind of like a hybrid between an RPG and a tower defense game where you have little to no control over the actual action that's going on. But like I said, the aesthetic is in, in uh, 19, uh, late 80s, early 90s computer game. Oh. Oh, I have to lean. Get that lean. Anyway, let's see here. That's a perfect example. Like, I sit here and I harp on it. Oh, sorry, I have a ping. Hold on a second. I sit here and I harp on this stuff a lot. But you guys do need to understand. Like, you guys need to, do need to understand and come to grip with, like, a lot of people, or I should say you guys. I don't need to address you directly. Because most of you people that follow me on Twitch understand that I spend the like as much as I sit here and I harp on Nintendo and I will play in uh, indie game or AAA titles, I will just as equally rank an indie game amongst the same ranks as a AAA title. I mean, something to keep in mind: my game from last year, my top ten game from last year, 2020, was Hades. It wasn't a Mario, it wasn't a Zelda, it wasn't a Sonic, it wasn't any of those AAAs that are associated with Nintendo. It was an indie game. Ready? Go! Uh, was it? I think the game is called like Wander Song or something like that. I think that's what it's called, Wander Song. Uh, it's a game where you're a bard, and you don't really do combat. You sing to influence the environment around you. It's a puzzle platformer kind of game. I can't remember what system I have it on, actually. I think I have it on Switch, actually. There's a, there's a game that, uh, if he pops in tonight, cool, but there's a game that, a friend, that my friend Tamal9 plays, or has played, that I thought about getting, called A Short Hike, and its aesthetic reminds me a lot of Animal Crossing. Like, its uh, appearance and everything reminds me a lot of Animal Crossing. 
but the uh, but it's a it's a short puzzle platformer about getting to the top of a mountain. But it's but like its aesthetic or it's like its appearance is basically a DS game. At least graphics and everything is like a DS game. you sit here, if you will give me the time, like if you sit here and give me time, give me a genre, give me a game that you played you think you liked, uh, this one is money. Give me a second to refresh. Like there's so many indie games I have in my library that I'm pretty sure if you gave me a genre, a creature a, or I guess you'd say a being even sometimes an inanimate object or a setting I can probably list off about two or three games for for any one of those things you give me that are indie game I've enjoyed that I wish I had more time for that I think most people would love I just get I do I just get do get super passionate about indie games because like these are people who have indie games are these people who have a quarter yeah that one these are indie games that indie games are people who have like a quarter to a tenth if not a fiftieth of the production team that all triple A's have yet they yet with how much they pour into it they are on equal ground and on equal footing with almost any triple A game that comes out. It just takes them, because they have such a small team, it takes them five times as long to put together their game compared to somebody compared to triple A just like just like, hey, let's put out the new Call of Duty. You got six months to do that? Yeah I got six months to do that Jim, let's do it. And they put out a new Call of Duty in six months. So I guess I may, we may talk more on it, but I'll have a uh, I'll have a capstone to this argument in just a minute about indies. Oh, 
going? It does. The fan base and the more money restricts your freedom of a lot. Because, <laughs> again, we're coming back around to this company right here in my chest. With Pokemon, they are the highest grossing media company in the world. If Pokemon deviates too much, that is... That is very easily a 10 to 20% loss in all of their revenue for for about two quarters or half a year. With an indie company, they're doing it out of passion. But if their game if their game even sells a hundred copies, there's a good chance they've come out ahead. And may even and may even you know push their name forward in company or producers or developers to look out for. Okay, then help type it. So here's what I'm gonna say right now. So here's what I'll tell you right now for anybody who's looking at indie games that wants to get one that that caters to something you want. And I'm just picking out from like a recent list here. You're tired of waiting for the new Sonic game, right? Go pick up a copy of Crumble. It's not it's not zoom run fast with quirky hedgehog, but it is still fast. If you're waiting for the new uh, new school Castlevania game, you know, new, I say new school and get all the collectibles in an area or get all the collectibles Metroid style game, I guess, Metroidvania. If you're waiting for the next Castle new Castlevania or Metroid game and you need something, on sale right now, as of the time this stream is live. Toho Luna Knights, beautiful 2D platforming Metroid, Metroid slash Castlevania style game is on sale. You want to know games to look out for, for my personal recommendation? Pizza Tower. They have been in development for the past three or four years, and it is a Wario Land style game that is, looks like it was drawn by the creators of Ren and Stimpy. If you want something that appeals more to like the Paper Mario kind of sense, I don't know what they're what the direction the creator's going with. Keep keep up a game keeping a game called Scrap uh, Scrap Story in mind. Like there are so many indie games. There are. Like, it takes them so long to make, but there are so many people that can now make indie games more on their own free time than there were 10 years ago. For every for every single AAA game that gets crapped out in six months' time, there are five to six indie games that have vastly more polish, in my opinion, than those indie games, than those AAA games that cost a fraction of the price. And because you're going for, and because it's a risk on both yours and that uh, and that indie developer's uh, indie developer and in, in itself, because you're both in risk for it, somebody's gonna walk out of that happy. It's either the indie developer because they made money off of their passion, or it's you and the indie developer because you enjoyed the game. All oh, right, I should probably select this. That too, Kasai, like, basically, some companies can get away with it more than others, and also planning is a thing, so I can't speak for certain if this is how it actually works. Because again, I'm not a game developer, I don't make games, I don't know how the process of games work, I just partake of them. <clears throat> if a company releases a game... If a company releases a game with no plans to make DLC going forward, if they charge 60 bucks, that's fine. If a company, if an indie company makes a game with no DLC plan, 
going forward and it costs twenty dollars that's fine and in some instances thirty forty dollars are fine too it's when a company releases a game and the day and a day the day of or a couple days before that game hits the store shelves they go yes yeah, so we have dlc planned for three months from now your game should not be sixty dollars or for indie games should not be 20 30 whatever it should be about 10 percent less because you know if somebody enjoys your game, they're going to buy the DLC. So I I guess the thing I'll put on the table, because I call because I basically called out the Call of Duty uh, fan base a minute ago. So, if Call of Duty, really, if the next Call of Duty releases, and before it's even out, before it's even purchasable, they say, we have plans for day one DLC for this game, where... If you spend, where we have plans for day one DLC for our game, or DLC like almost immediately after the game launches, that's going to cost X amount of money. Okay, your game should be, your game should be, whatever that D, about it should be whatever the cost of that future DLC is, minus fifty percent of that from the, the uh, base game you're selling. Some instances, and I mean some instances, I could be wrong, but like Smash Ultimate, I'm pretty sure Smash Ultimate, there were no plans for DLC until a couple months after the game came out. And then they started making plans for DLC. So the $60 for the game plus the DLC, whatever, that's fine. A lot of a lot of other AAA games, mostly shooters, have like this install base of <clears throat> I have like have a lot of have like a lot of things set up for them where when they start playing their game or when you pay for the game or get their game they know they're going to get you on DLC right away and they'll even tell you sometimes that DLC is coming as you purchase the game and I and I do also understand oh, here, okay, I'm going to have to use it I do understand that DLC is ne is a necessary evil nowadays just because of the fact that making games is getting expensive. I understand that. I'm not out here like, all DLC should be free, Mer. No. I understand making games is expensive and you need DLC to help bridge that gap sometimes. Oh, right. What is the best example I can give on this, actually? You did it! Um... Great I'm actually trying to think about this. It's kind of hard. Oh, thanks! Are becoming a problem. We're, we're working out recently. Or it's the equipment itself. Like, some people have done things where they've gone back 
and they've applied the cost of inflation to the cost of systems that were released a while ago. So, the Super Nintendo, or, yeah, I think the Genesis and Super Nintendo, oh boy, that's not going to measure it properly. Like the, like, the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis, when they launched, they were like, 130, or, they were like 150, 130, $100, somewhere in that price point range. If those were adjusted for inflation for today, those systems would be, would be 350, 400, 450. So the cost of game development is, oh wow, I'm not getting close today, whatever. The cost of game development is going up and you may see it as shady business practices to try and fill in the gaps there, but unfortunately to get us, like, games are like, are actually cheaper comparatively. Uh, yeah, games are currently, like, comparatively cheaper now than they were back in the day. Ready? Adju Go. Uh, inflation, inflation adjustment, adjusted for it. Good for working those upper arms. But, uh, nobody, nobody thinks about the cost of inflation with any of that stuff. Because everybody's trying to make their everybody's trying to make their dollar go as far as they can. So DLC is a way to bridge that gap, so that nobody, so that they can still make what they need to keep the company alive. They can still make what they need to keep the company alive and afloat. But at the end of the day, they still need to make their bottom dollar. made it all the way through the course so anyway yeah it's a shady business practice especially for those of us that are trying to still enjoy our gaming habits but still make a dollar or still or still trying to enjoy our gaming habits but also save their money as much as possible so that's why I say that's why I say when it's a risk for both parties when it comes to buying an indie game. It's a risk for the people who spent the time to make their own own game without a, without a major publisher behind it. It's also a risk to the buyer because they could have saved for th they could have taken three indie games worth of stuff and thrown it at a triple A game to, to get something they know for 90% certain is going to be polished. Mine spinach, that's a new one. Anyway, let me look this up here. I got another thing. It's Charles. Sorry, I'm I'm by the cat there, it's Charles.
Okay, sorry. So anyway, I hope you have enjoyed my TED talk on why video games are awkward to market to any everybody. That'll be three ninety nine and a firm handshake. And if you give and if you purchase the Give Me a Falafel DLC, I'll even give you half of that falafel back. Okay, time to run. Oh wait, I forgot. By the way, I know this stage very well. This is part of my normal workout session. My normal rough. Oh no, not this stage specifically, actually. Well, this is the new one. I guess the background is the same. Actually, you get the falafel DLC. I'll split half of it with you as when you give me that handshake. If you get Stroop Waffle DLC, I was getting Stroop Waffle back. You can have that. Those things are delicious. I'm not going to deny anybody a Stroop Waffle. Anyway, I haven't done any yoga today. Let's do a little bit of yoga to start off with here. Okay, let's switch sides. Don't forget to switch oh, man. legs. <clears throat> Speaking of that, they gotta get some water. I'm gonna get watered up really quick. Have you ever had a stroop waffle, by the way? Like, it's basically the combination of a waffle and caramel into one little cracker thin size thing. They're delicious. And they're usually and usually their their practical applications to be used as like um, the bread parts effectively of oh, an ice cream sandwich. They're delicious. Just put a scoop of vanilla on there, stroop waffle sandwich, go go to town. So, the green hopper is going to kick me. The, the scuttle bell is going to raise up its arms. Oh, I thought that was going to heal. So, what that allows me to do is to bow pole and to take out everybody but the scuttle bell right now, hopefully. Um. I don't know where the best place to get like a stroop waffle is, like a homemade stroop waffle. I've only had mass-produced ones, but usually they're like they're next to stroop waffles are either located in I'm trying to think they're usually located like near all the pancake mixes, like flowers and all that kind of stuff, or they're near the crackers. But it's a box. Oh, here, perfect. Alright, there's something I could do for a stream is to build whatever this is to build this, but it's a box about that big. You know, slightly bigger than a slightly about the size of a Joy-Con overall. And it's got like eight to ten of them in it. 
they're expensive for how many there are. But they are there. And I do encourage people to at least try them. It's a sweet, so generally you will like it. Okay, but... Yeah. And when I say expensive, like, you think a box like that normally for the candy is like, you know, two, three dollars. Or like five. They're expensive for the quantity of what you get in a box. But if you can afford it, it's worth it. And like I said, it goes good with ice cream. Or by itself, either way. a bit ago, and I'm probably going to say it again once we actually finish here tonight, but, um, I'm probably going to raid Charles tonight once the stream is over, because the Monster Hunter Rise beta, or beta, the new beta, is out, and he's currently playing it. So I'm going to go raid him once everything's done here today, which we've got about a half an hour, half an hour time, roughly, on this, but, I'll go raid him tonight. And I'll probably be hanging out with him as well for tonight, because I've gotten all my work done for the week. All my work is done for the week, so I am, except for rendering stuff, which doesn't, which I can literally do while I play. I can literally just chill with him while, while we be dumb and hunt monsters together. That also brings up something else. Alright. So. I mentioned a little bit at the start of the stream, which affected my sleep schedule. I'm being anonymous as all hell with this. But I will also say, if you know, you know. And please be anonymous as well. I understand that some people cannot like a game. I understand that entirely. There's a reason that the only Fire Emblem games I've put money towards are Fire Emblem Heroes and Fire Emblem Warriors. I have not purchased or played a mainline Fire Emblem game. I'm bad at tactics, and I don't generally like how Fire Emblem Hammer handles most of its every anything. But will I sit here and rag on people for liking Fire Emblem? No. I will say, I don't like Fire Emblem, I will give several reasons why, and I will say, please enjoy your game, but don't rope me into it. Please. I will participate in jokes if I understand them, but don't rope me into it. But don't rope me into the game. But, to kind of finish the thought on that before I lose track, so, there's been, like, I was part of this crowd at 1.2, where I did not enjoy Monster Hunter. I thought it was dumb. I had my, I had my own MMO, RPG, daily play fix for a while enough where it's like, this game seems dumb. I don't understand the appeal. Don't make me play Monster Hunter. I will sit and hang out with you while you play, but I'm not going to play it myself. So, fast forward to two years ago from today, I say, okay, almost every one of my friends plays this game series. 
Forgive my French. Fuck it, I'm diving in. If I don't like it, I spent $20 on it. Big whoop. And I see the appeal now. It is, in mentality, in mentality, it is an MMORPG. Without what, without what require, without, ugh, without what an MMORPG requires you, for most of them, to, if you, uh, if you don't play this game every single day, you are going to, you are going to lose, you are going to die, you are going to fail. And playing with friends helps a lot, too. And despite how serious and grizzled everything looks with that game, it's not a super serious game. Like, yeah, it's got moments. It's got moments that it gets tense, like any game with any amount of writing has. But especially if you play with friends and you kind of look at it from the outside and look at it like without this, with ignoring the super grizzled thing. It's actually really laid back and kind of goofy. Good job. That was amazing. Okay, here we go. Here's an example I'm going to give you with objects I have around the room. Like, what other game series can you have somebody walk up to a fight looking like this and think... They're gonna they're gonna topple a beast ten times their height and weight. Oh, by the way, that's the beginner's weapon that looks plain as day. Let's not talk about the decorated stuff that comes down the line. <laughs> That looks like you're literally wielding a stalag a stalagmite adorned with the jewels of Zeus all, all over it. You did it! Oh, level up. I thought the game broke on me. Excuse me. Oh, I missed one. Oh well, I missed one. Oh, let's get the stage. Oh no, it's not. I lied. Guys, Scooter lied.
Also, another thing, give me a minute. It's another, it's another pink for plants later on tonight. chatting with people about I was chatting with people about how the Monster Rise uh, demo is up again. Monster Hunter Rise demo is up again. And if they aren't too sure if they'll be interested in Monster Hunter, to play the demo and give it a try. As I was saying, you never know if you like something if you don't try it. And I'm currently in the camp of people who are who's trying a game and actually enjoying it. But anyway, hello everybody. Okay, let's My name go. is Scooter, also known as Tyler. Uh, I've known Barry Bliss for a long time, for, for those of you that are reading from her. And for anybody who... And for anybody who does, uh... Okay. Yeah, Christ, it's almost been 20 years now, hasn't it? For anybody who hasn't, nice. who hasn't been here before, here's me shilling. All the stuff below me here... Great. Perfect. All the stuff you see below me here, all those links, all right. that's, all my other social, that's all my other social media stuff outside of streams. Okay, I'm done shilling. Back to working out. I like shilling, because it tells people that I do things, but I also don't like shilling, because I'm humble. Sure. Hashtag humble brag. <laughs> right. nice. So anyway, as for the stream itself, Amazing. do you mind if I say your actual name, or do you, or do you want my Nami to say your actual name? Not full name, of course, but... Excellent. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Keep it up. Uh, Jessica has has Fantastic. provided the raid tonight because 
Well, it's Bride, you raid tonight for my stream where I'm playing Ring Fit. I do this every Thursday where I play through the adventure mode of the game with folks, either to Amazing. chat and hang out. I suppose everybody calls you Jess now, don't they? Um, I do this every Thursday. Either to encourage people to play along with me, or just to chat. Uh, ooh, hang on, my arm's sore. Um, yeah, I suppose. You. <laughs> it's a situation with my sister. With it's kind of the same sister, uh, situation with my sisters. One sister prefers being called Danielle, but the other sister wants you to call her Jenny instead of the other way around. It's a little. So I don't know who it is. So I go with full names unless people say otherwise. <laughs> But yeah, so, oh, a little bit back on top, but yeah, this is me doing Ring Fit, live and in person. Either encourage, it's a little bit hanging out, it's a little bit encouraging people to try and get them, to have them do workouts themselves to better themselves. Because, as Jess will attest to, at one point, I was over 400 pounds, now I'm like 240. Working out works. <laughs> okay, let's go. Bend your knees, buddy. But anyway. Okay. Sharp. Um, but outside Good of. Job. But outside okay. of that, um, outside of doing this ring fit stuff, I do stream kind of variety stuff. Sometimes it's indie stuff, sometimes it's Nintendo stuff. Sometimes it's on the computer, and other times it's on the Nintendo. <laughs> so I do variety stuff on this. I don't I don't aim for one genre. Excellent. Although my recent kick has been Tiger Warriors Age of Calamity. So, yeah. Nice. Great. Oh, yeah. It's, it's made me happy. And I encourage Great. people to know. Like, I won't sit here and harp on people to do it, but I do encourage people to at least give it a try. Nice. And if they don't, I'm not going to sit here and berate people for not not exercising. Yes. It's their life. Yeah. I lived that same lifestyle for 30 years. Well done. Fantastic. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Well, welcome back, Kasai. You missed the raid. Oops. Oh, we're done. Oh, yeah. Great hustle. Keep it up. <sighs> I will say I will say my stamina is still crap overall, but my overall appearance is much better. Oof. Anyway. But yeah, as I was telling people, and like I've already said before, I was talking about playing Monster Hunter Rise, the demo, and that probably shortly after I finish up streaming this tonight, I'm probably going to get myself cleaned up and go play that myself. Doing great. But, to also encourage people to, oh, oops, also to encourage people Drop to try out Monster Hunter if they never tried it out before. Because I didn't play Monster Hunter until Iceborne was on sale two years ago. <laughs> so let you kind of paint a picture of how late I am to the series.
Jazz. Jazz. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and now you have the funny haha -ha Frederick emote. As I sat here a moment ago, as I sat here ten minutes ago criticizing ha Uh, sit here criticize or I sit here criticizing the Fire Emblem fandom for the fact I don't play the series, but I understand people who would like to play the series. You know what? We're gonna one more. It's a bad idea, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do one more tonight. Just because of the raid. Just because of the raid. Like I'm close to my goals overall tonight. But we're gonna go for one more. Last time I made this mistake was when I was not ready to do an hour-long workout in game time. So, I could be on the floor dead. <laughs> if it does, send an ambulancia. All right, let's move. Okay, let's select the skill. Lots of yoga, I see. All right. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to pause just so it doesn't do anything weird on me. Yeah, that's also funny that... That, uh... That's uh, not Mondstadt. That's something else. The guard... The, fa the uh, nameless guard outside of the monastery that the game takes place at is going to be a unit in Fire Emblem Heroes now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, world. Or fire on three houses. Faceless guard. There we go. Got it out finally. Um, I was gonna say. So in world, in world, I in world, basically where I first started playing. <laughs> uh, but um But with world, I started out hammer, I still main hammer in world. But I also branched out into bow and sword and shield. Currently with Rise, I'm thinking I'm probably going to play Switch Axe and ditch the hammer. Because I do not like how hammer, how hammer controls in uh, Rise. It depends upon the person. Let me finish up my thoughts on Rise and then I'll come back. So, the wire bug I'm still getting used to with Rise, but the funny thing is another another friend of mine, some of you don't know yet, Jess, unless I've mentioned them to you in passing. He's gonna be, no, it's fine. Um, we're, like, he's going to get into the series finally for the first time this game. And we're kind of... Oh, boy. 
and like it, this this is his first Monster Hunter game, and he's been a Nintendo baby this whole time. So he has, this is his first experience with Monster Hunter. Period. I'm still getting used to the wire bug mechanics. But other than that, I love it. Also, by the way, just tr trust me when I say this, play Hunting Horn. Everybody's going to have a pocket fighting game terminology. It's going to have a pocket fighting horn, fighting horn build. Hi hunting horn build. Ugh. Yes. Um, how they did it is... It's been described to me. I never played Hunting Horn. But how Hunting Horn was described to me is... You had to stop and play the instrument to apply the buffs to everybody. So not only did they increase the... Uh, not only did they... They did several things. They increased the damage on it a bit. So it's like a viable weapon now. They gave it the buffing properties, but you don't have to have all, you don't have to have all four buffs perfectly match up to get the buff. You can basically choose between two attack up, two attack up, two defense up, two non-flinching up, I forget what the third one is. You can mix and match those, or you can even just have one of the buff if you mix, mix, up, mix up your rotation. And to apply the buffs to yourself, you don't have to sit there and play the weapon. It, play, it does it instantly. And you just get right back into the fight. So, Hunting Horn is kind of broken this time around. content creation game. Like, I don't care enough. I don't care enough to go back to a series. If I cared enough about playing a specific series of games, I would still be playing Worms, the Worm series, daily on my channel. But some people... Alright. And if I finish first, I'll try and raid you more often as well. But thank you again for the raid, Jess. Um, for some people who create content, specifically for YouTube. Like, if it's their job. If it's their job, like if it makes them enough money to live, they're gonna they're gonna pull on their on their stance of I'm done playing X game if they stop making enough money to support themselves. Perfect! Like I said, for me. I don't pigeon my hole in a specific genre. I don't yeah. pigeonhole myself in a specific niche. Fantastic. I'm all over the place. Fantastic. Wonderful. Excellent. So, so yeah, I guess to, to emphasize the point aside, if you see somebody who said they were going to stop okay. playing X, and then they go back to playing X randomly, like a couple months to, to a year later, it's because they hit a financial snag and they need to start making what they need to start making the content that they were making a lot of money off of. Yes, anybody who uh, came with Jess tonight from the raid, did you have any questions about Ring Fit that I can answer for you? Um, I can answer just about anything. As it says in the title, this is the New Game Plus file, so 
I have beaten the game and have been playing it for pretty much a year, story mode off and on. There's a set you can set up a custom workout mode so you don't have to play the story mode. But yeah, if there's anything you want me to answer for you, I am all I am all answers. But, and, and if there's any questions like that coming in, I'll wait a second, but, but for anybody who, with back to Kasai, yeah, like I said, if somebody ever goes back to the content they said they were going to stop doing, they hit a financial snag, and they need to dig themselves out of some debt. <laughs> Plain and simple. The new direction they thought they were going to go on isn't panning out for them. Well, I should say, oh, I'm tired. I should say, that's the way it goes for them, if they are making enough to make YouTube their full-time career. Or, for a lesser example, Twitch for their full-time career. I say lesser example because, because I've been doing YouTube longer than Twitch. Twitch three years, well, I'll say three years because that's when I got affiliate. Twitch three years, YouTube 12 as of next month. I think you know where my priorities lie. <laughs> well done. Excellent. Neat. Awesome. Excellent. Fantastic. Um, but also for the Raiders, because we got talking about Miles Trying to Rise, I will also say that, um, after this, I'm going to cap things off for the night and be done streaming myself, but I'm probably going to be reading my, my good friend Charles C. Bernardo, who is currently playing the Monster Hunter Rise beta, or excuse me, demo, it's a demo, Scooter, it is a demo, it's a demonstration of the game that is to come out in three weeks. Um, he's playing the demo right now with some friends, uh, my arms are again. myself included in that mix. But of course, I'm sweating, as you might be able to tell. I'm sweating profusely, and I need to clean up first. But I might be playing with him later. Um, and depending upon how I feel, I may even boot up stream again later, depending upon how everybody feels, because there's there's about eight of us total that want to play it. In that friend group. After the stream, after the stream tonight, after we're done with this boss fight, this will please kick. Uh, do I want to do? No, we'll do some of these. All right. Speaking of the fact it's a boss fight, two things. One, uh, excuse me. We've got to have money, and we've got to have experience. Oh, I'm done there. Let's do a rush twist.
Oh no, he's angry. I was afraid of this. I was afraid this would happen. So ready to see the most strenuous uh, exercise in the game? What? Oh, it's not a 10 second thing, at least not in this difficulty. This is close to a minute, I think. adjust my arms and that caused things to go wonky Quick drink. So, um, something I should add on. Because I said where I'm going to go raid tonight. Charles plays games like I do, of course. But he doesn't do the content creation on YouTube like I do. Specifically, he's an animator. So, we're gonna go read an animator tonight, once I'm done. And it will show because most, almost all of his stream assets are, are self-made. Right. If not all of them. that <sighs> with your legs bent slightly squeeze close lucky break thinking of a monster hunter rise a tough one apparently there was like an, act, an absolute cavalcade of monsters that are coming in to rise on launch that trumps what Forgive me for using that word, by the way. That trumps what um, what World had at base. So apparently, Rise is gonna have more content to it than base. Uh, Rise will have more content to it than World did. And I think that's because the primary platform they have to work with for a year is the Switch, and because the Switch can't has storage space for days. Has enough storage space for everything they're gonna do. Very nice. But doesn't have the power. They don't have to make super high end detailed models like they did with World. Wonderful. So they can have more content in their game right. rather than freer content. At least that's what all my okay. veteran Monster Hunter friends are telling me. This is a they word of mouth statement. So if I'm wrong, 
then I'm wrong and I'm dumb and I'm just repeating what people have told me. <laughs> Who loves her Dodo Gama is happy that Dodo Gama is gonna be in Rise. Awesome. Dodo's a good boy. Unfortunately, we have to hit him because he gets angry sometimes. Punish the Dodo Gama. Hug the Dodo Gama. over if you have a hammer like I do, or if you main hammer like I do. But Xenojiva is just, it's beautiful, it's a fun fight, yeah. Let's do KO it. Saw it coming. That was epic. Oh, that wasn't a lot of money. Oh, well, that was a lot of experience. Drop your hips. You see that my mind is too fast for us. Victory! There we go. I think I hit 400 tonight. We'll see you in a second here. And we're finishing. So yeah, this is the wind down stretching. Um, did anybody have any questions they wanted to ask me as I wrap up today today's stream? Take a peek, take, peep those numbers, fam. Peep those ones as well. <laughs> oh God, fireworks. Cause baby, you're a firework. Come on, let your colors burst. Make them go, uh, 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 as you shoot across the sky, I, I. Anyway. So yeah, I am, so yeah, this is my wrap up here. Like I said, we have a target we're gonna raid tonight as well. But, did anybody have any questions they wanted to ask me? as I wrap things up here. Let's begin our static stretching. Uh, I will you say to anybody who pod. is thinking about getting this game and following my footsteps though, the range of your don't follow my example. Keep in mind, you I've been working out hardcore for the past two years now. Stretch your upper Almost. Arms while pulling your elbows when I say hardcore, downward. I mean Going for a two-hour walk, jog on an elliptical is normal for me. Now do the same on the. Don't do what I'm doing. Don't go crazy like I'm doing because I've been doing it for a long time. Stretch slowly. But if you are going to follow me on the journey, be honest with the game, please. I may be at level 30 out of 30 difficulty right now, but I started at 23 Keep out of 30, and I was low. and I couldn't walk straight for five days because my because my quads were absolutely and shot and sore. Right in your arm and stretch the muscles of your left shoulder so it will ask you questions like how much do you exercise what is your height and what is your weight be brutally honest with it because it will make sure to not kill you now do the same on the opposite side slowly stretch out but be careful not to bounce 
I think it asks your weight, your age too. So yeah, it asks how much exercise you get normally, your age, your height, and your weight. Bring yourself gender is well. Smoke. I think gender is subjective because you can choose whatever Use your, your right hand avatar to pull looks back like. The fingers of your left hand. While arching back but the game wants to make sure you don't die trying to better yourself. Forward. It may look like a gimmick on the surface, but it's actually pretty... It is actually very forgiving. Now do um, the same on the opposite I will side. say, another friend I have. Uh, uh, Gamma PT, I believe, is what the name goes by. Gamma like Lad, as well. Closer. Um, he's, a guy, he's a guy here on Twitch. I think I follow him, actually. He does... He does. He writes. He does and does a lot of reviews for Falcom and X Seed games. Join your hands together in front of you. Position your glutes as um, if you're going to I coerced to sit him down into getting into this game because he forward. wanted to lose weight, and he said he was kind of at a point, breaking point for himself, where he knew he was unhealthy and wanted to fix himself. I told him that, and he told me I started on difficulty five. I started on difficulty five, thinking it was going to be too much, too Take little, and your ankle up the chair. I started on difficulty Pulling five out of backwards. thirty. And, stretch the front and of the I couldn't walk for a couple days because I was so out of shape. Now do the same like I said, the opposite side. it's going to be rough if you play a lot if you play this game, you can but it tries not to kill you. Chair for balance if you need to. It tries its best not to kill you, I should say. Your own determination to push yourself harder can Bring kill you as well. <laughs> like and I haven't used them for a couple weeks Good now. Job. But I've gotten up to the point now where I've started using ankle weights if I feel like I want to challenge. Should I do exercises in a certain order? You know, to start with the lower body. Nah, I do it the other way around. I do a... I start off. Well, I can show this off really quick here because I'm going because I can. I'm in the menu working on my custom workout. So, what I do, what I do is I do this one first, which I did, which I did some of these on on stream tonight. But I do this one first as an overall all body workup after the game's initial workup thing it kicks you through, and then I go over to this. I start at basically all of my waist and. Uh, waist, hip, and ab exercises, and then I do all my arm exercises, and then I go for my three and a half mile run. That's true. Kasai does bring up a point. There is a rhythm game mode. I'm I'm not going to show it off. I may just like put some things up to like they've got various tunes from the game. Which you can have, kind of hear me thumbing through. I can't hear it too well because I am uh, I don't have the headphones on to hear it. But they added this in shortly after the game came out for free. But then they added in more songs from other Nintendo IPs. So. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, that's it for me for tonight. Um, like I said before, if I feel like a change, if I feel like changing it up or getting spicy, I may change up, I may change my plans and stream Monster Hunter Rise along friends if they want, if they are as well, or if I, or if I feel better, because as I said early on in the stream, I have had an incredibly lazy day. I basically slept over the course of this entire day so far. I think I've slept for over half of it. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, let's go set up a raid to Ray Charles. And like I said, and like I said, this is where we were gonna go right out the gate. No questions asked. This is all my choosing. Uh, forgive me while I get some things set up for myself after the fact. So let's see. Oh, Charles and Platter. Charles and Platter both stream right. Okay. I'm gonna raid. I'm gonna raid Charles because I promised I would raid him. I will also mention if you, if you raid Charles, cool. You raid Charles. If you would rather raid, if you'd rather go stick around with somebody else who's streaming rides that I might run into throughout the night. Look into uh, look into Resonant, 
R E S O N A N T hearts. So they're both going to be streaming that. I'm going to prioritize Charles tonight, but you guys, you guys will know, you guys will know what you want to do. But it's muted. Ooh, they're fighting Magna Mala right now. Uh, raid message, raid message, raid message. You guys can kind of choose your own thing. You kind of guys can choose your own message. I got mine. Who's winning the get? Let me do a proper. There you go. Um, I will do that as well. Hold on. Let me open Twitch back up again. So, uh, me and Charles may be intermixed and maybe going, um, uh, meeting up with Platinum at some point throughout this. Resonant Hearts. Do, 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 do. So, yeah, um, we're going to raid Charles, but there's Platinum if you'd rather go with him. I'm giving options. I realize I messed up the the award part. You fixed it, but um, Saturday, unless I'm playing Monster Hunter Rise with the homies, if that is what's going on, I'm probably gonna be playing Age of Calamity some more. Cause I'm in post game with that game, and I'd like to finish it so I can at least start on Strikers before Rise comes in. Cause I'm probably gonna pick up Persona Five Strikers. Anyway, all that aside, thanks everybody who came in. Thanks everybody who followed. Thanks, Jess, Jess, again, once again, for the raid. And Kasai for the raid. I almost forgot that. I apologize, Kasai. If you want to see what I do more beyond just Twitch streaming, all my links are down here below me. All three of them. <laughs> anyway, have a great evening, everybody. I'll see you this weekend.